I being 7 o'clock, I will call to order the City Council meeting for Monday, August 7, 2023, and the clerk will call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Here. Vincent. Here. Gibson. Here. Austin. Here. Michaud. Excused. Witham. Here. Girding. Here. Cameron. Here. Messier. Here. Chair recognizes Councillor Witham, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Brings us to agenda item number three, which is our recognition of indigenous people, our native ancestral Americans. This, need, this meeting is taking place on Narikana, which is the unceded traditional ancestral homelands of the Abenaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki people, past and present. We acknowledge with honor, with gratitude, the land, waterways, living beings, and the Abenaki, the people who have stewarded Narikana throughout the generations. Brings us to agenda item number four, which is public hearings scheduled for this evening. This evening, we have the sale of the former police station property, 5 Main Street, map 11, lot 210. Chair recognizes the clerk to read the uh, statement for the public hearing. This public hearing is on the sale of the former police station property, 5 Main Street, map 11, lot 210. The City Council will now hear public comment on the sale of this city property to include the release by the Summersworth Housing Authority of all the urban renewal restrictions, covenants, and conditions that may have been encumbering this property, and the elimination of an easement for continued public use of the park, also known as the USS Summersworth Pocket Park, located on this property. Does anyone wish to speak in favor or against the sale of the former police station property, 5 Main Street, map 11, lot 210. Please come forward, state your name, your address, and the ward you live in if you have that applicable information. Anyone wish to speak in favor or against the sale of the former police station, 5 Main Street, map 11, lot 210. None being so, I will close the public hearing business to agenda item number five, which is comments by visitors. The Summersworth City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinion and views at the City Council meetings. In accordance with Council Rule 7C, a time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the council wishes to suspend the rules. The speaker shall not enter, any, enter into any debate with any person, the mayor, council members, city manager, or department heads. At this time, we welcome comments by visitors. Please come forward, state your name, your address, and the ward you live in if you have that applicable information. Good evening and welcome. Just hit the back, Wendy. Just the button. Yeah, that please. one? Yep. Hi. Perfect. Wendy Berkeley, Ward 1. Um, I've been kind of waiting to come to this meeting for two or three weeks now uh, when I saw on the agenda that there is a proclamation uh, reaffirming Summer's Earth's commitment to inclusivity and diversity. Um, that was encouraging. I think everyone in this room who knows about what happened to William and Lauren a few weeks ago and then again two weeks ago were pretty rattled by that. And um, so that's a really important step, making that proclamation. And I appreciate that the flags are up again and the uh, mayor uh, wrote in the most recent mayor's corner. Um, it's a struggle and it's a struggle that not only the city of Summersworth is experiencing, we're experiencing it. Uh, it's big. I fear that it's too late to help William and Lauren feel safe in this community. I know if this happened to me once in my home, let alone twice within a week, I would probably be beating feet pretty fast. So um, please don't let this get stale. Don't let this incident get stale because for them it's very real and it's very day to day and I can't imagine the trauma that they're feeling right now and the fear. I would never want to feel that way. I sure hope that we can help them feel safe and that they stay and that their wonderful business <sighs> reopens. I don't know how realistic it that is, but um, we really do want to continue to be a community of safety and inclusivity and we we don't want to be a refuge for hate um, so please keep this on your minds day to day i think about it every day now when i wake up in my home what that feeling must be to not feel safe in your home so um whatever group that you identify with whatever whatever family members you have who have ever experienced this um please don't let this become yesterday's news because i guarantee for a lot of people it is not yesterday's news Thank you. 
Thank you. Any further comments by visitors this evening? Any further comments by visitors? Good evening and welcome. Laura Berry, 211 Green Street, Ward 4. I am also here to speak about similar instances that just happened. I'm with other members of this community, I believe, in not wanting certain things to go stale. I want them to be acted on because I do believe we are at a turning point in our society and especially our town or city. The biggest thing that concerns me about a couple of the incidents that have happened recently is I see online posting all the time, but I'm not seeing action from our community. I believe we have to partner with our police, and I also think we need to partner with this council. I'm a big one to say, don't just say what went wrong, let's act on it. So I'm actually here to suggest to council one way we can move forward. I don't know of any community watches or anything of that. If we have them, I apologize. But I would actually like to see our council partner with our police department and establish city watches in every single one of our districts. I think that would be helpful. I think it would get eyes out there and it would also stop other things from happening if we have that voice and we have that eye. I don't know how that will work, but I will be the first volunteer for my ward. So I'm hoping that the city council can partner and move forward with that. I think that will stop people from inside our community and outside our community coming in with malicious intent. And I hope that council does keep this at the forefront of their thoughts and that we move on this and make our community safer because it has proved not to be safe as of recently. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any further comments by visitors this evening? Any further comments by visitors? Good evening and welcome. Good evening. Uh, Neil Larson, 16 Hamilton Street, Ward 1. Uh, I serve as the chair of the Summersworth Cemetery Trustees. Uh, I would also like to express my support for William and Lauren. Uh, what occurred last month was an absolute travesty of justice and a violation of the sacred space. Uh, when they first graced us with their presence in our city uh, through a novel one-of-a-kind confectionery space, uh, it added a unique charm to our downtown storefronts. That something like this could even occur in Summersworth is unconscionable, unfathomable, um, the only and, and, and fully beyond comprehension. The only silver lining uh, is the community support that I've seen take place. Um, but to an earlier point, um, action does need to be taken. Uh, and that's the only thing that we can hope for right now. Uh, I would like to thank uh, all who've lent a hand in supporting William and Lauren uh, through this tumultuous time. My other topic for tonight concerns the Forest Glade Cemetery trustees. Uh, the primary role of the trustees is to maintain, preserve, and strengthen the integrity of the Forest Glade Cemetery while also promoting the virtues of its sanctity and its significance. Uh, I took over the role of chair in June of 2022 uh, following the untimely passing of our friend Maggie Roberge. Since then, we've had a vacancy which we have found to be quite challenging to fill. Uh, despite the vacancy, we've nonetheless managed to address several key achievements, including significant headstone repairs, uh, a new roof for the Italian at Wellhouse cedar shingle roof with a copper cap adornment. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, do a drive-by uh, going up. It looks uh, tremendous. The Weather Guard team did a really fantastic job. Uh, that said, we do still have a significant backlog of needs and action items, as you can probably imagine, for a 22-acre cemetery built in 1851. Uh, filling our fifth seat would allow us the additional bandwidth to accomplish even more than we already have. Uh, recently, we were fortunate enough to uh, connect with Summersworth resident Ali Visser, uh, who has a passion for historic cemeteries and local history and has expressed a desire to join the trustee team. Uh, her application was submitted on July 13th. Uh, she was given the indication that her formal nomination would occur tonight on August 7th. Um, but uh, subsequently, after noting that her name was absent from tonight's agenda, a call to the city clerk informed her th that she would not be included in tonight's agenda and would need to be further vetted by the mayor's office. Uh, no indication of when or even if said follow-up would occur. Uh, seeing as the council doesn't meet again until September 18th, Six weeks from now, the earliest she'd be able to join the trustees wouldn't be until October 9th, uh, and that's presuming that the volunteer application form would actually be honored. 
Uh, we've, of course, had a long-standing need to fill this vacancy, 14 months, uh, significant growing needs for the cemetery. Uh, I don't understand why this specific application would need to face any type of scrutiny, constraint, or unnecessary delay. So in the interest of both progress and community engagement in Summersworth, uh, tonight I ask you to please consider including Allie Visser's nomination for the Forest Glade Cemetery Trustees into tonight's agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments by visitors? <clears throat> further comments by visitors this evening? Name's Richard Brooks. I live at 18 Linden Street, Ward 1. Um, not great at speaking off the cuff and didn't really have planned time to write this up, so bear with me, but I'm not speaking as a representative of the HDC, but do want to address a few con concerns related to the HDC as an individual member and as a citizen of the city. Um, there's a lot of topics that play into this topic, uh, a lot of different yeah, sorry. <laughs> Again, not the best public speaker off the cuff. A lot of things play into this. I clearly could not cover much of them in five minutes. Um, first, the 85 Elm Street. Seriously, I wanted that to proceed. I didn't like voting against it, but imagine if your solar farm was approved as a solar farm and came back with, now we want to put up windmills. They changed it significantly, and I think that whereas needs to have some consideration in this situation. Um, Form-based codes, I believe, played a part in this as well. Uh, it leads, to dev leads developers to believe they want a building as big as possible, build as much as possible, and it kind of contradicts sometimes what the HDC would look, would look for in that particular setting. I even heard Mr. Witham mention that the National Guard proposal might be too big for that site. Well, how big is too big on 85 Elm Street? Everybody's going to have a different line on that. But with a group of people, hopefully we come to a consensus. Obviously, it didn't go the way most of you would have liked. I apologize for that, but again, there's a lot of considerations here. Imagine if the HDC was here in the 60s when urban renewal came through and everybody said no and stop that. How pleased would people be with that? From my indication, I think a lot of people would have been pleased with that. We would have been called crazy back then too. Berwick is developing the old prime site with reasonably sized buildings, with character. They're doing a great deal of work over there that is turning out to be very well situated to be in a historic downtown. Both Summersworth and Berwick share a similar style of construction throughout. I'd love to see some of that take place over here. That's ultimately, in my opinion, what I think we need to see, stuff that fits. And this is also with a conceptual review, which this, those particular people, 85 Elm Street, had come through and discussed, but they showed up with plans already in place. I would have liked to have seen them come up and say, hey, let's hear your concerns before we come up with plans. I, I envision that what a conceptual review would work better as. Start from zero and let's discuss what everybody's concerns are, and I think you get a better product in the end. Basically, I'm just asking that you don't let this one decision that you all may see or some of you may see as a bad decision, don't let it impact the HDC. We've had many other projects that have gone through and been approved, many of them with good results. In fact, go up to the Noble Pines and look across the street. There's a couple houses going up there. I think they fit into this district awesome, and that's what we want. We just want things to fit and keep the character rather than having the large, oversized, out-of-character buildings that destroy a neighborhood character and community's character. So that's 85 Elm Street. The old National Guard site, I don't know what to think of that. It's, it's a similar situation to 85 Elm. There's a, developers just want to put as much as they can to make as much money as they can, and I know we need affordable housing. I don't believe Housing will be affordable in the foreseeable future for several reasons. One of them is inflation. That's doing nobody any good. Corporate takeover of housing. Everybody wants market rate apartments, and market rate, because we're so close to Portsmouth, is getting crazy. So as long as corporates run it, 
they're going to ask the top dollar they can. It's not affordable, but when you start doing the math and statistics, it looks affordable. Local landlords are getting displaced. No longer can someone, do you see people renting out the other half of their duplex just to offset their mortgage cost. Now you've got landlords buying up two, three, four unit buildings. And again, back to the corporate mentality, how much money can I make? Zoning inhibits this. Where can new units be placed? And again, this is why I say all of this leads into so many different facets that we could talk about that all relate to this. Um, you know, it used to be that houses, houses were grouped around neighborhood stores, but now we've lost the neighborhood stores. We've got corporate greed putting two pharmacies across the street from each other. How can it be walkable when the only pharmacies are in one location? Zoning fails to help with that, if you ask me. And zoning makes smaller businesses tough because for small business, mom and pop shops, a lot of times it's a home-based business. Good luck finding a place to do a home-based business in most any town nowadays. Just zoning in general has almost eradicated that option. And then taxes. Taxes just keep going up. I pay $400 a month for my taxes when you figure out the total tax bill. On my modest house, that's expensive. And of course, this is going to get passed along into the rents, no matter where you rent from, because if you can't cover your taxes, upkeep, and so on and so forth, again, everything just gets unaffordable. It's a sad fact in our day and of our daily life now. But thank you for letting me vent on this. I, you all do a great job, and please keep up the good work. Thank you. Any further comments by visitors? Any further comments by visitors this evening? None being so, it brings us to agenda item number six, which is the consent calendar. Chair will obtain a motion regarding the consent calendar. Councilor Austin. I'll move for its adoption. Councilor Austin moves the consent calendar be adopted as so far as presented, seconded by Councilor Gibson. The question for the council is on the adoption of the consent calendar. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and the consent calendar is adopted. Brings us to agenda item number seven, which is comments by councilors. Any comments by councilors this evening? Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. I know typically we wait to the end to comment, but there's a lot of people here, and uh, I'd like to comment on some of the things that have been spoken to this evening. Uh, we'll start with the roof at the cemetery. Wow. If you haven't seen it, it is incredible. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to drive by there where I've worked on that chapel right next to it uh, for years. I did interior, exterior. I did a lot of work there uh, in my business when I was um, doing painting and remodeling. And it's really nice to see that. That's a really nice thing to see, that roof. It's incredible. Um, let me just comment on HDC. You know, the council, we, we elect or we, we appoint these people and we, and we have a committee. And then we typically criticize that committee for what they do. I see it more times than, than none. Um, I do believe that uh, with, in looking into this, I do believe that um, they did come back. They started with this plan and ended up with this plan. Uh, and it didn't meet, I believe, the, what the historic wanted or what they brought even to um, the planning board. Um, so uh, if we're going to have a committee and we're going to appoint people to it. We might not like what the decisions are of the historic uh, district committee, but we have to live with it because we have that committee and we take these people for what they know and for what they put into it. So that's just my thoughts on that. <coughs> and finally, I want to say uh, and comment about once again the, uh, the uh, National Guard Armory. You know, I said last meeting that Chinberg was a quality builder. And it just goes to show you what type of quality he is. That company saw an issue with the neighbors and what was going on, and they pulled the plug on the project, I believe, the next day or a couple of days later. So that just goes to show you what type of person or what type of uh, company that they are. Uh, not to cause problems with people in the community for the almighty dollar. Thank you, Chinberg, and thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Counselor. Further comments by Counselors? Any further comments by Counselors? Counselor Gibson. A um, lot of commentary about the 
HDC. And I understand why people have concerns with it. But as Councillor Vincent said, we appoint people to do a job. They have a charter to operate under. And to the best of my knowledge, they follow that charter. If there are concerns, and I do not want to see the HDC done away with, but if there are concerns with it, then the charter should be reviewed and modified if necessary to meet the concerns of councillors and the community with how it's operating. But don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Further comments by Councillor? Councillor Gerding. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, yeah, I just want to comment on a few of the uh, comments by visitors as well. Um, again, typically we wait, but I feel like it's important to kind of have them hear some of what we have to say tonight. Um, first, I want to start with HTC. As I said last meeting, um, I stand by the decision that they made. I defend the members in the, their decision. I felt like um, everyone was very thoughtful. We as a committee uh, tried to work with the developer in their initial round of proposals back in, gosh, earlier this year, I believe. Um, might have even been last year. Um, and was very proud of the initial approval that we provided the developers for 85 Elm Street and felt like it met many of the qualifications that we as a committee um, kind of hold true for the district. Um, and I think, I, you know, I can at least speak for myself that I was quite shocked with the plans that were then presented at our uh, recent meeting um, to change what we had already approved uh, and it was quite uh, shockingly different from what um, we had worked very hard to come to agreement on. So again, uh, stand with them. Felt like did a very uh, quality job working on that and am very disappointed in the developer's choices to um, not work with the committee nor the city uh, on that project. I think it's a shame and a loss for them uh, if that doesn't continue to move forward. Uh, they're missing out on what I believe is a pretty amazing uh, city. Um, and maybe we'll hopefully get somebody else who actually cares about working with us and doing what we know is best for this city. Uh, so uh, again, just wanted to defend them and their decision. I think they do great work. So thank you to all of the HTC members. Um, I also wanted to comment on the incident uh, downtown at the William Fool's uh, confectionery shop. Again, I thank everybody who came out tonight to speak on that. Um, it was really impactful for me. Uh, it was scary for me. Um, I, you know, it really breaks my heart to think that that could happen in our community. Um, I think that, I, I, I believe that it is being handled appropriately by the authorities and I trust our police force and it seems as if it's now moving on to federal authorities due to potential for a uh, um, civil uh, case. Um, and I trust that it will be handled well there as well. Um, but I do appreciate the suggestions that were brought forward with how we as a community can move forward from this. Um, I continue to be so heartened by the level of support that people have expressed. It has warmed my heart. Uh, I certainly you know, would never want anything like this to happen, but to see the number of uh, community members who came out tonight who um, you know, showed uh, their support online, who donated to William uh, and Lauren. I believe they raised over 30, maybe even $35,000 uh, just from just, you know, people like us who care about them. Um, so hopefully that can help them kind of get back on their feet and maybe reconsider whether they do or do not want to stay here in our city. I would love for them to reinvest that money back in their business here, uh, but I will certainly let them make that choice for themselves. Um, but I do agree, I think there's a lot that still is left undone. Um, I love the ideas of the, you know, the community watch. I would love for citizens uh, to be more aware um, of what's going on. I had actually, interestingly enough, a phone call from a resident who lives across the street from their uh, business who was reaching out because uh, their daughter is now driving and she is afraid to park uh, downtown. And the mother was actually asking for a parking spot uh, closer to where they live, uh, kind of up on Lord's Court behind their uh, apartment, because uh, she was, you know, she witnessed the incident that took place. And the daughter witnessed this. And I don't think anyone's child should 
uh, see uh, anything of that degree. And even an adult shouldn't really witness that. It, sounds, it seems awful. Um, but it, it, it makes me, it at least showed to me, like, people do pay attention, but it's also, people are afraid now from this. And I think that we need to show that, one, that is not what Summersworth is, or that's not how we operate, and we don't accept hate in our community, and I know that that's true. Um, but it also, I think, you know, two, I think it means that we just need to show, you know, that we are standing hand in hand, arm in arm, and watch out for ourselves. And so I think something like that is a great idea. I would love more ideas. Please reach out with them. Um, I'm racking my brain for what I can do. Um, I was really thankful to see that uh, Senator David Waters um, immediately was on top of it and worked with the Senate to get a release a statement in, in support of our community and in support of William and Lauren. Um, that was great, but there's still so much more. Uh, I mean, I challenge the state as a whole and even the governor to address hate because this is not just a summer's earth problem. This is not even really just a New Hampshire problem, but we've seen it in multiple communities. Portsmouth was spray painted with Nazi symbols. Um, there was businesses in Franklin that were, had their windows smashed in because they had like trans pride flags. Um, I think there was another, I want to say there was an incident in Keene. It, it is across the state and I guarantee you across this country. And I think that I would love us as a community to, to find problems that work for us, but I do know that, I, and I do challenge leaders at even higher levels to take things like this seriously. Watch what you say and think about how your words influence adults and especially children and how a generation of kids is potentially being raised hearing things that we would have decades ago thought were obscene. And I really, really, it just concerns me and I challenge the governor and I challenge people at the federal level to take action at their levels as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Further comments by Councillors? Any further co Councillor with them? Yeah, briefly, um, comments regarding the HDC. Uh, I'm not sure where the conversation got started with our displeasure with the members of the HDC. I don't recall that at our last meeting. Uh, I do recall uh, term charter was used. I'll use their guidelines was brought up uh, as a uh, a potential stumbling block with some of the decisions and Councillor Girding and I have had a, a brief conversation around the fact that the current guidelines do not allow the HDC to take financial elements of a project into consideration and I think that is a significant shortcoming. Uh, I'm not sure I have a solution for that but I see that as a stumbling block and I used the example at the last meeting of the retaining wall issue on Grove Street of some years ago uh, as an, ex an example of that. And it was at least flagged by the developer of 85 Elm Street as one of the reasons for their changes. So uh, I have no qualms with anybody on the HDC. Uh, they do excellent work. I have sometimes problems with the guidelines, which I understand that we approve here at this level. Uh, and have approved at this level. It's just one of those things, I'm, I guess I had never thought about the, the financial piece, but it is a piece that I think needs to be somehow incorporated into their guidelines. I think it's an important piece. Um, the other thing I'll say about the HDC, that, that everything has gotten better about their meetings, they're televised now, but the last meeting where 85 Elm Street came up, and I've heard now innumerable times that the plans were radically different. I've never seen the new plans. They, you know, they were, everybody was looking at pieces of paper. They weren't put up on uh, easels or on the TV as they were at the prior meetings where you could watch along rather well. So uh, just a word to staff that if developers have those types of changes, they need to have plans submitted so that we can follow along. It would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Further comments by Councillors? Any further comments by Councillors? None being so, brings us to agenda item number seven, which is agenda item number eight, which is communications. We have no communications this evening. Brings us to agenda item number nine, which is presentations of petitions. We have none to bring forward this evening. Brings us to agenda item number 10, which is the mayor's report. Honorable members of the council, I submit to you the mayor's report for Monday, August 7th, 2023. 
Tonight before the City Council is Resolution 424, reaffirming the City of Summersworth's commitment for inclusiveness and diversity. Our Hilltopper spirit last month on two separate occasions was put to the test. While our history and character are embedded with diversity, we are not immune from acts which test the strength or attempt to weaken or tear the fabric which holds us all together. The foundation of the Hilltopper city and nation is built upon the vast diversity of citizens from which it draws its strength. We are a community of different ethnicities, religions, and sexual orientations. When one member of our community is attacked, all members of our community are attacked. The Hilltopper spirit of neighbor helping neighbor will continue to shine its light and overpower any darkness, prejudice, or act of hate that attempts to erode the character of who we truly are. Summersworth will stand with William Poole and his husband Lauren and will do everything it can to help our fellow citizens to ensure that justice is brought against the assailants. The ugly face of hate continues to raise its head in all 50 states. It is gaining strength through the open assault on all minorities and members of the LGBTQ plus community by elected officials and others in power who are validating actions of discrimination and hate and assault through the narrative of intolerance. They continue to spread, including within our public schools by banning the teachers, by banning the teaching of inclusiveness. Together as a united community, we are reaffirming our commitment to celebrating all to standing with our neighbors, William and Lauren, and to creating the journey of all who have stood before hate, to create the city and nation we promised to the world we would, a city and state, a nation where all are protected and celebrated. Hate has never and will never have a place in Summersworth or America. While Resolution 4-24 has been introduced, while Resolution 4-24 has been introduced by the Mayor's Office with every City Councilor reaffirming their commitment as co-sponsors, it does not resolve the acts of the past. It once again sends a clear message that the City and its leadership and citizens are committed to continuing the journey of reaching our creed. If ever we are going to reach the goals as a society we aspire to, then we must overcome the prejudice and acts of hatred and intolerance, which continue to poison and erode the foundation of what we are built upon. Tonight, this council will reaffirm its strength, reaffirm its commitment, reaffirm its stamina. We know this journey will continue to be long and hard, that it will continue to test us, make us reflect upon who we are as individuals, and yes, at times, make us feel uncomfortable. However, we do not have a choice but to reach the final line of equality for all. As the late Martin Luther King Jr. so eloquently stated, we must live together as brothers or perish together as fools. Congratulations to the Summersworth Police Department for organizing the recent National Night Out. The event was once again a huge success celebrating the partnership between the first responders and all members of our community. The strengthened community is working together to keep citizens safe. By continuing to foster these positive relationships, we will keep Summersworth on the move in a place where all can be honored and celebrated. Promises made, promises kept. Congratulations to all members of this and past city councils over the past decade, along with members of the Summersworth Fire Department for the official ribbon cutting of our new 21st century fire station, which took place earlier today. 10 years ago, during my first mayoral address, I outlined how this city would hold its commitment to ensuring that our first responders would receive 21st century pay and equipment to carry out their mission to protect us all how we would follow the lead of students carrying the banners through the streets of Summersworth during the 2013 Christmas Parade, which read, We Believe in Summersworth. Ten years later, we have delivered on that promise by supporting competitive salaries, contracts, equipment, and today, officially dedicating our new fire station. Today's dedication was not just about sticking to our promises. It was reaffirming our commitment to our community to ourselves, and to once again stating, we believe in Summersworth. 
Congratulations, Summersworth, for today we once again have celebrated how your history is proud and that your future will remain bright. Summersworth, you are truly on the move. Under nomination appointments and elections, under nomination appointments and elections, in accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments, the following are being brought forward this evening and placed in nomination. Michelle Mears, Director of Planning and Community Development for reappointment as a representative to the Strafford MPO Technical Advisory Committee with a term to expire in June 2025. Michael Bobinski, Director of Public Works and Utility for reappointment as an alternate representative to the Strafford MPO, MPO Technical Advisory Committee with a term to expire in June 2025. And Amy LaBelle for reappointment as the Ward 3 Supervisor of the Checklist with a term to expire in June 2028. In accordance with Council Rule 17, the nominations will remain open until the next regular scheduled meeting. And this respectfully concludes my August 7th, 2023 Mayor's Report. Brings us to agenda item number 11, which is reports of standing committees. And we will start with the Chair of the Finance Committee, Councilor Witham. Thank you. Finance Committee met with all members present on July 27th at 5 p.m. here at City Hall. Uh, first item of business was to uh, delve into our vehicle uh, lease purchase agreement. Uh, I know the term lease sounds funny, but it's just a term that we use in city government for the purchase of vehicles. We own them outright after a period of years. Uh, this year, the city is looking to acquire uh, a number of pieces of rolling stock, two marked police cruisers, one unmarked police cruiser, a fire command SUV, and a new front end loader with plow equipment. Uh, our initial down payment will be $20,000 with the principal balance of about $500,000 uh, due through the lease purchase agreement. Um, Finance Committee uh, supports moving forward with the lease purchase of all of this rolling stock as it is needed. Uh, we did discuss with city staff uh, having two different terms of lease uh, agreements. Uh, one would be a five-year lease on the uh, police uh, equipment, uh, as typically we turn that equipment over relatively quick, and we thought a seven-year lease was appropriate for the Fire Command SUV, as we typically keep that for a period of 10 years or so, uh, and the front-end loader, because uh, we typically keep that for even in excess of 10 years. So, uh, again, Finance Committee supports moving forward with the lease purchase. Uh, of all of these vehicles. There are a number of resolutions uh, before us for first reading this evening. We'd respectfully request uh, suspension of rules to move forward with the acquisition of all of this equipment this evening. Uh, it's all budgeted items uh, and inventory is thin and so the quicker we get in the queue to get it, the more likely we are to get it. Uh, particularly things like uh, uh, the uh, front end loader uh, with plow because uh, that takes a whole lot longer from a del delivery perspective. Uh, next item we reviewed was the uh, proposed interim repairs to the Noble Pines water tank. I think as council recalls, uh, we've had an assessment done of that water tank, which is like the fifth or sixth oldest water tank in the United States, oddly enough. Uh, for, it's, it's destined for replacement ultimately, but one of the things that we know needs to happen is to replace the uh, aged uh, uh, fiberglass roof that is on top of the water tank that was installed uh, some time ago. We had originally budgeted $154,500 for replacement of that roof. However, as you might well imagine, there are not a lot of vendors that do this type of work. Uh, the, uh, the price has actually increased uh, to $330,000 for this temporary repair. Um, the Finance Committee does not support moving forward with a temporary repair of that cost. Uh, instead, we support moving forward with a more rapid replacement of the water tank at the Noble Pines. To that end, we recommend moving forward working with Wright Pierce engineers uh, to uh, do the uh, design and ultimately cost estimates. The first item will be for Wright Pierce to develop uh, a scope of work and a price uh, that we can move uh, forward with. Um, in the CIP, it's currently carried at $6.325 million to replace that water tank. Uh, we suspect the number will be north of that. Uh, however, we need to, uh, again, move forward on uh, 
uh, the final design work for that. So again, we're working on a price with Wright Pierce. In the meantime, city staff is going to work with Wright Pierce engineers to see if there are any super short-term repairs that can be made to the existing uh, cover uh, to buy us some time. But uh, long and short, uh, we're trying to move faster on the replacement of that water tank. Um, you know, ideally, if we design a scope of work, that gets developed, it goes out to bid. You know, the soonest that we're probably doing anything up there is late 2024, early 2025. Uh, so we're still a ways out because it will take some time for uh, plan development and bidding. But just an update on that. Um, next item we discussed was potential extension of the Route 108 sewer main. Uh, currently uh, on Route 108, the sewer main, if you head from, uh, I'll say, Blackwater Road, uh, where the Cumberland Farms is towards Dover. The uh, sewer on Route 108 terminates at Willand Drive. Uh, there is a very large tract of land uh, beyond that, uh, referred to as the Garabedian property. It's multiple acres, prime development property that is not serviced by city sewer. There are also a number of other lots in that corridor that would benefit from city sewer. Uh, this has percolated to the top uh, for a discussion if we want to extend that sewer main because the state continues to proceed down the road of a complete streets upgrade to Route 108. That will include some widening of the roadway, the addition of sidewalks and all of that, uh, which will put a ban on cutting in the pavement uh, for five to seven years on a state roadway. So uh, it would delay us significantly if we wanted to extend sewer out there. So. Uh, Finance Committee does believe this is the time to look at extending that sewer main, uh, probably through the establishment of a betterment district, so uh, it would be borne more by the users in that corridor than all ratepayers. Uh, so we've asked finance staff, uh, Director Smith and Public Works Engineering staff to uh, work out some better estimates of what that cost would be and what a betterment assessment might look like. Uh, so. We're walking slowly, but we want to continue to move the ball with this potential uh, expansion of the Route 108 sewer. So more to come on that. Uh, under miscellaneous, uh, we did uh, discuss how uh, the police department's uh, purchase, uh, it's actually a lease, here we go again with a lease, but this is actually a lease of their tasers. Uh, the expense is approximately $3,000 more than we budgeted. Again, things are escalating. Uh, the life expectancy of about five years. Uh, the Finance Committee supports moving forward with the lease of the tasers. Uh, the additional $3,000 can be found likely within the Police Department budget uh, where we're early in the fiscal year. Um, Next item we reviewed was replacement of a pedestrian bridge on the Willand Pond uh, walking trails. We've received a number of uh, estimates. Uh, the direction we'd like to proceed is a more permanent replacement of the pedestrian bridge with an aluminum, I'll call it dock style uh, bridge that could just be lowered into place, uh, be fabricated off site. Uh, the cost for that bridge would be about $57,000. We think that's high uh, for what we would be getting, uh, so we are soliciting some other uh, quotes uh, in line with uh, an aluminum dock style bridge. Uh, there's a possibility we might be able to use conservation uh, commission uh, funding uh, for that because the conservation commission does have funds for that purpose. Uh, we checked the legal status of that and we could use them if they're in agreement to use them. Um, a brief discussion of a couple of miscellaneous items, but nothing really related to finance, and we adjourned at 531. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Brings us to Government Operations Chair, Councilor Mishu, who is not present this evening. Is there a report from the Vice Chair? No? No report this evening? Okay, thank you. Brings us to the Economic Development Committee Chair, Councilor Austin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have the dubious distinction of reporting a non-meeting tonight. Um, the Economic Development Committee was uh, charged with taking another look at Resolution 5423, uh, which was to authorize the city manager to enter an agreement with Chinberg on the uh, former National Guard Readiness Center. 
um, shortly after our last meeting, uh, as, as you've heard so far this evening, that proposal by Chinberg was withdrawn. And so there was no need to have the Economic Development Committee meeting, but we would recommend that when that resolution comes to council for consideration tonight, uh, that you vote to deny the um, moving forward of that resolution. Thank, thank you, you. Councillor. Brings us to Public Safety Chair, Councillor Pepin. Yes, thank you. Uh, we did have a meeting here at the City Council Chambers on uh, July 27th at 3.15. First thing on the agenda was approving the minutes of March 22nd, it passed. passed. Uh, first item was a vehicle purchase for the police department, which the city manager gave us, uh, went over the memorandum that uh, Chief Macklin gave us uh, previous about the um, police cruisers, uh, the two marked SUVs and the one uh, unmarked vehicle. Um, the chief was notified by Mc, Mc, uh, McFarland's Fords that there will be no longer, they're no longer producing the 2023 <coughs> units and that the 2024s are not, not even going to be on production line right now due to the uh, manufacturing, they're not manufacturing them. So the chief is looking to see if he can find some alternatives to, to go. He did uh, track down Owen's mo uh, motor vehicle, has two SUVs that ready to go and uh, McFarlane and Ford has a, a car that is ready for the uh, unmarked car. Um, so we voted three in favor for approving for the resolution to go forward to get these. So they're holding these vehicles, so that's one of the reasons we'd like to waive it tonight. Um, so hopefully we can get the purchase on them. So uh, they needed to replace some of, the, some of our cruisers that really need to be replaced. Um, council um, has already talked about the lasers. It, it was over, but um, the budget come in a little bit over. It, the bids went out over a year ago. So uh, basically it did, um, the phases are also, the training is also included in that. The extra cartridges are also included in that in that five year lease. So that was something else I'd just like to, to bring out forward. Um, the body cameras should be out on the offices within the next two or three weeks. Um, so uh, you'll probably see them. I don't know if they're out right now, Chief. That we've had the meeting a couple of weeks ago, but uh, but just uh, to know that they'll be out. Uh, we did discuss the body cameras, how they fit to the new um, the new vests and stuff. Uh, the manufacturers changed a lot of the magnetic units because the magnetics was, wasn't quite strong enough, so they were being knocked off during some light scuffle or anything else moving. So the uh, manufacturers already updated that. Uh, so that we did discuss that. Uh, the, the police chief also gave us an update on the radio console. There's two radio consoles that are being upgraded. The stuff has been audited, but it hasn't been delivered yet. He did also go through the wellness uniform to, uh, if you saw the, um, they're already starting to wear the wellness uniforms now and the chief has a wellness uniform on if anybody wants to take a look at it uh, this evening. Uh, on staff, uh, two officers uh, just completed the uh, police academy. They're on field training right now. Hopefully they'll be on their own very shortly. And we have two more going in for a 16 week training camp starting in uh, in the very near f in very near future and also also sergeant lafave is retiring from the police department i hate to say she's going to the dark side she's coming over to the to the fire academy she's going to be a fire investigator to the fire academy so um i hate to say it, uh we're going to lose her as a great officer and we're really going to miss her as far as that's concerned uh the fire chief gave us an update um basically he went over the uh state bid on the tire hole uh, basically, the, the quote on that is about $75,000 with all the equipment that needs to be put into it. He did explain that Tahoe 
it fits a little bit better into the fire service than the SUV Fords. So um, he did go through that with us. Um, and also that they'd like to try to keep the Tahoe that they have right now because we have an assistant chief coming in not the first of the year. So hopefully that would be going to the first to the assistant chief. So we did discuss that. We also had a, a lengthy discussion on how how often the, the department um, SUV should be replaced. And we're saying that 10 year plan is still pretty feasible. Um, so. So we had a motion uh, passed 4 0 to support the resolution going for the towel, as far as the committee's concerned. Um, we went through the fire station project. Uh, we had a two to six week delay because of the rain and the stuff. As, as you notice, the tire is still not on, but the curbing is set now, and, and the flagpole has is, been completed. At the time of the meeting, it wasn't completed, so we went through that. Um, And everything it seems to be going pretty well as far as the staffing is is we had two openings which hopefully are going to be filled in the near future future and that's and that would be the end of my report there point of, counselor point of honor point of order your honor would this, would this be the appropriate time to see the chiefs with his new uniform if the chief would like to stand up and, and maybe do a tour, and if that and if that's so, Your Honor, kind of walk the would the chief then walk? be would, would the chief then be referred as the mannequin? I just want to know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a modified version of the what was here for the administrative wear. That officers on the street, and I also have one with the area vest, which holds this plus a variety of other things. So they are. Very lightweight, very durable, dry fit type. The officers love it. Keep it right up their back. Again, it's a dual purpose. This is the administrative wear. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Council. Luckily, this isn't Project Runway where the Council will vote whether you're in or out. So, but we're gl glad, glad you were able to sport that new uniform and, know, and inform the public of it. Of some of the new attributes to it so thank you brings us to public work in the environment Councilor with them it's interesting to follow that so <laughs> it goes in the category of other duties as a sign so well done uh, public works in the environment met back again on July 27th in the afternoon uh, several of these items I reported under finance so I don't need to go into too much detail here again we discussed the purchase of the new front end loader it is a John Deere loader uh, with a complete new winter plow package. Uh, that comes in at a price tag of just under $310,000. Uh, we are getting $60,000 for our older unit that we're trading in. Uh, pretty high value for an older unit, so we, we think we're doing pretty well there. The committee uh, unanimously endorses moving forward with that purchase. And again, if we could suspend council rules to get the ball rolling on all of this fleet stuff tonight, that would be great. Uh, I gave the report on the Noble Pines water tank. We had that discussion at Public Works and Environment as well, as well as the Route 108 uh, sewer project. Uh, under DPW updates, uh, Director Babinski brought us up to speed on a number of ongoing projects. Um, I won't go into any great detail on any of them. Uh, as some have been reported out, such as the Italianate well house roof being completed, we did get that report. Uh, GMI Asphalt has, uh, by and large, completed all their paving work in the city for this summer. Uh, it concluded with First Street, uh, it was the last street on their list, uh, and uh, that might have some minor roadside work to be done, but by and large, it is complete. Um, the TAP grant, which is responsible for the new sidewalk on High Street, hopefully many people have seen that. That came out terrific. Uh, there are a few punch list items still to be done on that. Uh, some stair railings on some of the new granite steps going up to the homes. Uh, but by and large, that project is done. That also includes a new sidewalk from Bartlett Avenue to Maplewood School and then from Maplewood School to uh, just behind the middle school. If you haven't walked that, it's uh, a very nice walkway. Um, 
between uh, all of those school properties. So, uh, we're moving forward with the Ash Street uh, Butterfly Park project in a partnership with Home Depot. And uh, lastly, reported out that, uh, well, I guess two more items. Unitil has begun the installation of a gas line on Blackwater Road that will ultimately serve our police and public works facilities. That's part of an agreement we had with them relocating their uh, substation uh, to the uh, gravel pit off of Maple Street from its current location on the corner of Bartlett Avenue, sort of a comprehensive project there. And uh, work has begun, uh, albeit very slow, on the CMAC grant, which is the upgrade of all of our traffic signals from the Blackwater Indigo Hill Road intersection all the way to the Dover line. Uh, new signal controls, signal heads, handicap tip downs, walkway improvements. Uh, it's about a million dollar project as well, uh, which should help with traffic flow through that corridor. So. Um, uh, that's all progressing. We had a discussion on a number of other miscellaneous items, but uh, none of which do I need to report out here. So thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Gibson? Um, just a question. Uh, the gas line going in, it's only to service us or... No, I think it could service other residents in okay. that corridor. The primary driver was to service our facilities, but the other users should be able to tap into it, I would think. So, thank, thank you. you. Brings us to the Recreation Committee, Chair Councilor Cameron. Nothing tonight, Your Honor. Thank you, Councilor. Brings us to agenda item number 12, which is reports to special committees. Any reports to special committees? Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, there has been no traffic safety committee, and I have nothing to report on it. However, I've had two things brought to my attention. One, one is the Pine Handy the Pines, the handicapped parking, and Barlett Avenue crossing uh, in conflict with the, the Coast Bus, if it would be so kind to the city manager to schedule a meeting. Thank you. Any further reports to special committees? Any further reports to special committees? None being so, city manager. Thank you, Your Honor. We'll be having a traffic safety committee meeting um, in September. We have uh, four or five items that will be Thank on you. the agenda. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I'm going to jump right down to new business. I, I think uh, the committee chairs pretty much laid out a, in a large part on my uh, written comments to council that was included in my written report for this evening's meeting, so I'll, I'll try not to be too redundant. Uh, under F Resolution 524 in regards to ordering the police uh, SUVs and the Yenmark police vehicle under the lease purchase agreement, I appreciate the council's consideration uh, as indicated by the chair to waive rules. We did locate, the chief did locate a couple of 2023 Ford uh, Explorer SUVs on Ir the uh, Irwin Ford uh, dealership under state bid. Um, they are brand new without any mileage. Uh, and part of the rationale again is the 2024 Ford Explorers, uh, at least the information the chief received from the dealerships was that they were being delayed as far as production. In regards to 624, the front end loader, again, as noted, we'll be trading in the old loader and receiving credit towards the purchase of the new loader. And uh, we don't anticipate receiving that probably until the next calendar year. So we'll be utilizing our current loader um, and then turning it in once the new loader is ready to be picked up. 724 is in regards to lease purchase agreements. And again, the committee recommended and you received a memorandum from our finance director in regards to bifurcating all of our rolling stock, uh, a few of them into a five-year lease purchase situation and the others into a seven-year lease purchase situation. In regards to Resolution 824, uh, ordering the fire command vehicle and accessory equipment, again, as discussed at the committee level and endorsed by uh, various committees. Uh, We'll move forward with accepting the recommendation of Chief Kremlinger and support, which was also supported by our equipment mechanic, um, to pursue the purchase of another Chevy Tahoe. The information I received uh, from our equipment mechanic and from the chief is the Tahoe appears better suited for a fire command vehicle in lieu of the Ford Expedition in terms of durability and functionality. And in addition, 
it should come in at a lower cost. Um, the plan again is to present the, to utilize the present Tahoe to be passed along to the new deputy chief, which is budgeted uh, for half the fiscal year. So we hope to have somebody aboard uh, come January. In regards on to other, the vote to confirm the city's authority to sell the, the former police station at, at 5 Main Street. Uh, the title insurance attorney for the purchaser requested the city council hold the public hearing and take the vote under other. Additionally, he, he requested the Summersworth Housing Authority weigh in on these former restrictions to ensure that these can be dismissed without challenge. I did provide you a copy of a letter from the executive director of the SHA, Debbie Evans, regarding their support to move forward with the sale without any past restrictions or easements staying in place. Quickly, a couple of informational items. The fiscal year, 2025 to 2030 CIP, the process for the six year CIP has begun with our city departments. The plan takes several months to complete and the CIP is then presented to the planning board for review and comment prior to submittal to the city council by the December 15th city charter deadline. And I provided you a memorandum in regards to how it's laid out. We also uh, asked the school superintendent to work with her staff and the school board in um, submitting a, a plan for their facilities. Uh, by email, I did um, inform the council that our main so-called so city attorney uh, is retiring at the end of September. Uh, I attached a copy of his letter to the city making his announcement. Uh, we work with all the attorneys in the Mitchell, Mitchell Municipal Group, and uh, my, I anticipate, unless directed otherwise by council, to again to continue to utilize them as our city's attorneys. They're familiar with our staff. They know our regulations, our charter, our ordinances, and we have a very good working relationship with them, and they've been very successful in regards to representing the city in legal matters uh, at the uh, district and superior court level. That concludes my comments this evening, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Brings us to agenda item number 13, which is nomination appointments and elections. On a nomination appointments and elections, in accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments, the following are being brought forward this evening and placed in nomination. Michelle Mears, Director of Planning and Community Development for reappointment as a representative to the Stratford MPO Technical Advisory Committee with a term to expire in June 2025. Michael Bobinski, Director of Public Works and Utilities for reappointment as an alternate representative to the Stratford MPO Technical Advisory Committee with a term to expire in June 2025. Councilor Witham. Yes, if uh, Council was so inclined, I'd like to make a motion to suspend rules to vote on these two nominees uh, this evening. Council Witham moves that City Council rules be so far as suspended as to allow both nominees to be, con to be voted on and confirmed this evening. Seconded by Council Cameron. The question were the Council's on suspension of Council rules. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And City Council rules are so far as suspended. Council Witham. Yes, I'd like to move for the appointment of both Michelle Mears and Michael Babinski to the Stratford MPO. Council Witham moves that, that Michelle Mears and Michael Bobinski be so far as confirmed to members of the, as regular member and alternate member to the Stratford MPO Technical Advisory Committee, seconded by Councilor Cameron. Discussion? None being so. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and the nominees are so far as confirmed. Also introduced this evening is Amy LaBelle for reappointment as a Ward 3 Supervisor of the Checklist with a term to expire in June 2028. In accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments, the scheduled nomination will remain open until the next regular scheduled meeting. Brings us to agenda item number 14, which is items which have been placed upon the table. We have no items that have been placed upon the table. Uh, without objection from Council, before we go into unfinished business and new, I would like to jump right to other. We do have the purchaser along with uh, some other members here this evening. This is the second meeting that they have waited through very patiently, might I add. Uh, so if we can get to other without objection for them. That objection from council will move to other A, a vote to confirm the city's authority to sell five Main Street property as approved by the city council on June 20th, 2023 in reference to resolution 5323 with the clarification that by doing so, the city is confirming the release of the property from the 23 year restriction and from the easement reser reservation for the pocket park. Discussion. Council Witham. 
Thank you. Fully support this. Um, you know, at the last meeting, there was some public comment, I think, regarding the National Guard property, but they pulled this one into it as well and uh, made it sound like a realtor approached the city and it's how the property got sold. And a um, term I like to use, it's called faction. Sounds real, but it's not. Uh, the city actually entertained realtors to do the work for us. Mm -hmm. uh, so just to get the order straight. Uh, and the reason that the building sat vacant for so long was not because we didn't want to sell it, but it was not in a saleable state. Uh, the city worked with the EPA and state DES uh, to secure various brownfields and other grants to clean the property from asbestos, PCBs, and it, the building now has a clean slate uh, for uh, what will be the new owners to start with. So uh, it's easier for the city to secure that grant funding than it is for others, uh, which is why it took so long. So just to get the record straight on that. Question for the council is the vote to confirm the city's authority to sell five Main Street properties as approved by the city council on June 20th, 2023. Further discussion? None being so. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it and the vote is hereby confirmed. Brings us to agenda item number 15, which is unfinished business. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 5423 as released by the Economic Development Committee. Resolution number 5423, to authorize the city manager to enter into a purchase and sales agreement with Chinberg, Chinberg Builders to sell the former National Guard Readiness Center located on Blackwater Road. Resolution 5423, having been ready first and second time, is open to further amendment. No amendment be it offered, the chair will obtain a motion on Resolution 5423. Councilor Austin. I'm not quite You'll sure be doing a reverse this I time. Yes, I would move that council, I make a motion that we... Uh, oppose this resolution. Councilor Austin moves that resolution 5423 not be approved. Seconded by Councilor Gibson. Discussion? None uh, being so, if you are in favor uh, yeah. of not approving resolution 5423, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Is the parliamentary situation clear? No. Hold that one more time. Yep. If you are in favor of not approving, so if you are in favor of not approving resolution 5423, you will state by, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed then you would state by saying no so a yes vote is actually a no vote in this case right. on the resolution is the parliamentary situation clear chair recognizes the clerk call the roll councillor pepin yes vincent yes gibson yes austin yes with them yes i vote no <laughs> girding yes <laughs> cameron yes messier Resolution 5423 is not approved. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 224. Resolution number 224, to authorize the city manager to execute the joint powers agreement of the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire and to form an electric aggregation committee known as the Summersworth Community Power Committee. Resolution 224 have been ready first and second time is open to further amendment. No amendment be it offered, the chair will obtain a motion on resolution 224. Councilor Girding. I move for its adoption. Councilor Girding moved that resolution 224 be so far as approved, seconded by Councilor Messier. Discussion. Councilor Girding. I just wanted to say I'm very excited about this. This uh, has the potential to save residents in the city a lot of money on power. Uh, we'll be partnering with other communities across the state. Uh, most of the power that is utilized in this coalition is renewable and green, so it's also a sustainable way to get power. Um, and it's a really great opportunity for our community, so quite excited about this. Question for the Council is on the adoption of Resolution 224. Further discussion? None being so. If you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 224, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Austin? Yes. Witham? Yes. Girding? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. Resolution 224 is adopted. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 324. Resolution number 324, to authorize the city manager to negotiate a lease extension with Hideout Golf Inc. to operate and maintain an 18-hole public golf course known as the Oaks Golf Course in Summersworth, New Hampshire. Resolution 324, have been ready first and second time, is open to further amendment. For an amendment? No amendment be it offered. The chair will obtain a motion on resolution 324. Councilor Messier. Councilor Messer removes that resolution 324 be so far as adopted, seconded by Councilor Cameron. Discussion. 
Councilor Witham. Yes, thank you. Uh, fully in support of this. Just a question for the city manager. Does the actual lease get brought back in front of us for adoption at some point, or is it fully in your hands after this? City manager. No, it, it re uh, I will be required to bring it back here for another vote. Got it. Thank you. So, I, I, again, just to continue on that, I, I'm fine with that. Uh, I fully support this. I think the partnership has been a good one. Uh, and I have no reason to believe that that wouldn't continue. Um, so again, look forward to seeing the final product in front of us. Thank you. Question for the council is on the adoption of resolution 324. Further discussion, Councilor Austin. I agree. I think that this one makes all the sense in the world. I think we have a great relationship uh, with the Oaks and I, uh, you know, to allow them time to recoup their investment in improving that property, I think it makes all sense in the world. I'm fully supporting this. Thanks. Question over the council is on the adoption of resolution 324. Further discussion? None being so. If you're in favor of the adoption of resolution 324, you will state by saying yes. If you're opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councilor Pepin. Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Abstain. Austin? Yes. Witham? Yes. Girding? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. Resolution 324 is adopted. Brings us to agenda item number 16. Chair recognizes the Your clerk. Honor, if I may, just uh, procedurally, is it okay if I make a motion to move immediately into second reading of resolutions 424 through 824 immediately after their first reading? That's a request to do them in a batch of suspend rules. Um... That is in within order. So you are moving to suspend council rules to allow a second reading. Your motion is uh, for a second reading on resolution 424 through 824. Correct. Seconded by Councilor Vincent. The question for the council is on suspension of council rules to allow a second reading this evening on resolutions 424 through 824. All those in favor of suspension of council rules, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And city council rules are so far as suspended. Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on resolution 424. Resolution number 424. Proclamation reaffirming the city of Summersworth's commitment for inclusiveness and diversity. August 7th, 2023. Whereas the city of Summersworth is proud of, it, of its commitment to community diversity and human compassion for all to live in conditions of human dignity, respect, and peace. And whereas the Hilltop City is built upon the vast diversity of citizens from which it draws its strength and sense of community. And whereas the Hilltopper spirit is vested in its essence of neighbor helping neighbor. And whereas we as a community reaffirm our commitment to celebrating with, with all with our values of liberty and equality while condemning all actions of hate, discrimination, and violence. And whereas the city of Summersworth calls upon all Hilltoppers to commit themselves to join the fight for the elimination of all forms of discrimination and to ensure that everyone has the right to live in conditions of dignity, respect, and peace. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and city council call upon all Hilltoppers to silence all hate and to embrace each other with respect and love while celebrating the colors of our community. Sponsored by Mayor Dana S. Hilliard, Councilors Martin Pepin, Kenneth S. Vincent, Robert Gibson, Don Austin, Richard Michaud, David A. Witham, Matt Girding, Nancy Cameron, De Dennis Messier, approved city attorney. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 424. Resolution number 424, proclamation reaffirming the city of Summersworth's commitment for inclusiveness and diversity. Resolution 424 having been ready first and second time is open to further amendment. No amendment being offered, the, ter the chair will obtain a motion on Resolution 424. Councilor Gerding. I move for its adoption. Councilor Gerding moves that Resolution 424 be so far as adopted, seconded by Councilor Cameron. Discussion? None being so. If you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 424, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councilor Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Skip them. I apologize. Austin. Yes. Witham? Yes. Girding? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. Resolution 424 is adopted. Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on Resolution 524. Resolution number 524. To authorize the city manager to order two SUV style police cruisers and one unmarked police vehicle, which will be funded by a lease purchase agreement. August 7th, 2023. 
Whereas the City of Summersworth's Capital Improvement Plan proposes a replacement schedule for police, police cruisers and unmarked vehicles to maintain fleet integrity and reduce maintenance costs. And whereas the City of Summersworth's adopted fiscal year 2024 budget provides funding for two SUV style police cruisers and one unmarked police vehicle through a lease purchase agreement. And whereas the City, the Summersworth City Council would like to improve the fleet of police cruisers by continuing the replacement of traditional sedan style cruisers with a more modern SUV style of police cruiser. And whereas the Summersworth City Council would like to improve the fleet of police undercover vehicles and replace them with a newer, more reliable fleet of vehicles. And whereas city staff have evaluated the advantage of the use of a standard vehicle manufacturer acquisition policy and recommends the use of the New Hampshire state bid list for vehicles on the most e efficient method of proc procuring these new vehicles. And whereas the Public Safety Committee supports the ordering of this equipment. Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to order two new SUV style police cruisers and one new unmarked police vehicle which will be funded through a lease purchase agreement. Sponsored by Councilors Martin Pepin, Robert Gibson, Don Austin, Richard Michaud, D David A. Witham, Dennis Messier, approved City Attorney. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on Resolution 524. Resolution number 524 to authorize the city manager to order two SUV style police cruisers and one unmarked police vehicle, which will be funded by a lease purchase agreement. Resolution 524 have been ready first and second time is open to further amendment. Council Witham. I'd like to amend uh, the resolution to strike the third, whereas it's not applicable anymore as we've gone completely to SUV style police cruisers. We're not replacing sedan style anymore. So it's a inaccurate statement. Council Witham offers the following amendment. Is it? Duly seconded. Seconded by Councillor Vincent. Discussion? None being so. All those in favor of the amendment, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And Resolution 524 is so far as amended. Resolution. Chair will obtain a motion on Resolution 524 as amended. <laughs> Councillor Witham. Move threw me for, off for a second. <laughs> move for adoption of the resolution as amended. Council with a moves that resolution 524 as amended be so far as adopted. Seconded by Councillor Pepin. Discussion. Councillor Vincent. I just have one request to add my name to the uh, to the list of people. Uh, Without objection, thank we will you. add your name as a list to the sponsor. Question for the council is on the adoption of resolution 524 as amended. Further discussion. None being so. If you're in favor of the adoption of resolution 524 as amended, you will state by saying yes. If if you're opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Austin. Yes. Witham. Yes. Girding. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Messier. Yes. Resolution 524 is adopted. Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on resolution 624. Resolution number 624, <coughs> to authorize the city manager to order one front end loader and accessory equipment for the Department of Public Works, which will be funded by a lease purchase agreement, August 7, 2023. Whereas the city of Summersworth's capital improvement plan proposes a replacement schedule for public works equipment to maintain fleet integrity, standardize equipment and reduce maintenance costs. And whereas the City of Summersworth's adopted fiscal year 2024 budget provides funding for a new loader with accessory equipment through a lease purchase agreement. And whereas City staff evaluated equipment from qualified vendors and recommends contracting with United Construction and Forestry of Pembroke, New Hampshire for the purchase of a John Deere 544P loader with accessory equipment. And whereas the Public Works and Environment Committee supports the ordering of this equipment. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to order one front end loader with accessory equipment, which is funded in the approved fiscal year 2024 city budget through a, through a lease purchase agreement. Sponsored by Councillors David A. Witham, Dennis Messier, Martin Pepin, Kenneth S. Vincent, Robert Gibson, Don Austin, approved City Attorney. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on Resolution 624. Resolution number 624, to authorize the city manager to order one front end loader and accessory equipment for the Department of Public Works, which will be funded by a lease purchase agreement. Resolution 624 have been ready first and second time is open to further amendment. No amendment be it offered, the chair will obtain a motion on resolution 624. Councilor Austin. I'll move for its adoption. Councilor Austin moves that resolution 624 be so far as adopted, seconded by 
Councillor Pepin, discussion. None being so, if you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 624, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Austin. Yes. Witham. Yes. Girding. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Messier. Yes. Resolution 624 is adopted. Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on Resolution 724. Resolution number 724, to authorize the city manager to sign a lease purchase agreement for the purchase of city vehicles and equipment. Whereas the fiscal year 2024 adopted budget contains an appropriation for a down payment toward the purchase of the following city vehicles and equipment. Two SUV style police cruisers, one unmarked police vehicle, one fire command vehicle, one Department of Public Works front end loader. And whereas city staff solicited quotes for financing this purchase through a lease purchase agreement and recommends entering into agreement with tax exempt leasing corp. And whereas the finance committee reviewed these quotes with city staff and supports the, the recommendation including the following lease terms. Utilize, utilize a five year lease for the police cruisers and the unmarked police vehicle. Utilize a seven year lease for the fire command vehicle and the Department of Public Works front end loader. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the, si that the City Manager is authorized to enter into a lease purchase agreement with Tax Exempt Leasing Corp, utilizing the lease terms recommended by the Finance Committee for the acquisitions of city vehicles and equipment. Sponsored by Councillors Martin Pepin, Robert Gibson, Don Austin, David A. Witham, approved City Attorney. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on Resolution 724. Resolution number 724, to authorize the city manager to sign a lease purchase agreement for the purchase of city vehicles and equipment. Resolution 724 of Embrody first and second time is open to further amendment. No amendment be it offered, the chair will obtain a motion on Resolution 724. Councilor Witham. Move for its adoption. Councilor Witham moves the adoption of Resolution 724, seconded by Councilor Pepin. Discussion. None being so, if you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 724, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Austin. Yes. Witham. Yes. Girding. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Messier. Yes. Resolution 724 is adopted. Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on Resolution 824. Resolution number 824, to authorize the city manager to order one fire command vehicle and accessory equipment, which will be funded by a lease purchase agreement, August 7th, 2023. Whereas the City of Summersworth's Capital Improvement Plan proposes a replacement schedule for fire vehicles and equipment to maintain fleet integrity and reduce maintenance cost, and whereas the City of Summersworth's adopted fiscal year 2024 budget provides funding for one fire command vehicle with accessory equipment through a lease purchase agreement, and whereas City staff has evaluated the advantage of the use of a standard vehicle manufacturer acquisition policy and recommends the use of the New Hampshire State Bid List for vehicles as the most efficient method of procure, procuring these new vehicles, and whereas the Public Safety Committee supports the ordering of this vehicle and equipment. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to order one fire command vehicle and accessory equipment, which will be funded through a lease purchase agreement. Sponsored by Councillors Martin Pepin, Dennis Messier, Richard Michaud, Kenneth S. Vincent, Robert Gibson, Don Austin, David A. Witham, approved city attorney. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 824. Resolution number 824, to authorize the city manager to order one fire command vehicle and accessory equipment, which will be funded by a lease purchase agreement. Resolution 824, having been ready first and second time, is open to further amendment. No amendment be it offered, the chair will obtain a motion on resolution 824. Councilor Witham. Move for its adoption. Councilor Witham moves that resolution 824 be so far as adopted, seconded by Councilor Pepin. Discussion. None being so, if you are in favor of the adoption of resolution 824, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councilor Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Austin. Yes. Witham. Yes. Girding. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Messier. Yes. Resolution 824 is adopted. Brings us to agenda item number 17, which is closing comments by visitors. Any closing comments by visitors? Please come forward, state your name, your address, and the ward you live in if you have that applicable information. Any closing comments by visitors this evening? None being so, bring us on to agenda item number 18, which is closing comments by council members, and we'll start with Ward 1 Councilor, Councilor Pepin. 
Yes. Um, we talk about the way people react to, to people and how they, they treat people. I, I, I said this before, it's, it's not just summers, it's nationwide. I don't know why people do the things they do anymore. I think this city has been, the city council, every member up here has been supportive to no matter what, what your religion is, what your sexual orientation is, or whatever it is, we support it 110% that we accept you. Um, as far as community watch and stuff like that, I think we all need to be community watch. Every resident in the city of Somerset needs to take and open their eyes up. We have a, a, a very willing police department that's not prejudiced against anybody in this community and will act on anything that, they, that, that is brought to their attention. And I think that's important. I mean, I, I don't know where the nation's going. You hear this country singing, basically talks about a small town about taking their community over. And, and basically, uh, he gets protested because he stands for law and order in, in the small communities and they, they won't accept the, accept the thing. We shouldn't be accepting that, that type of behavior in, in, in our community. But it's up to us as a community to do it. It's up to us to do it legally, go through the police department and what, whatever we need to do, and us to report the stuff to the police department so they can take action on it. I don't know what else the city council can do. I mean, we try very, very hard to make sure that everybody is welcome in this community, and everybody should be welcome in this community. And I hope everybody feels like they're welcome in this community. Um, and I hope just because an incident happens like this that it doesn't drive people out, that you gotta stand for your rights in this community, and we'll stand with you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Ward 2, Councilor. Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. I just, uh, I think uh, Councilor Pepin said it exactly what I was gonna say. I can't agree more, thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Ward 3, Councilor. Councilor Gibson. No comment. Thank you, Councilor. Ward 4, Councilor. Councilor Austin. Thank you, Your Honor. I think that um, this topic certainly is one that's not going away anytime soon. I think that, um, you know, we live in a world where we try to say everybody's welcome and everybody's included, um, and yet there's still factions that say if you're not like me, then you're not worth anything. Um, all, I think all we can do from a policy perspective here at City Council is continue to reinforce that uh, as leaders of the city of Summersworth, that we do welcome all people into the city and we don't uh, have any regard for, you know, race or religion or, or anything else. I mean, you're, if you choose to live here in the city of Summersworth, we welcome you and you, we, you are welcome as a citizen, regardless of who you are, what your beliefs are, how you choose to live your life, who you choose to love. Um, the whole world has gone crazy for a whole lot of different reasons. Uh, this is not a, a Summersworth problem or New Hampshire problem, as Council Gerding mentioned before. Uh, but all we can continue to do is to continue to reinforce that same feeling that we are a community that welcomes all people here regardless. And I will continue to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Moving to the at-large side, at-large, Councilor. Councilor Witham. History for the second time today for me, so this is pretty good. I am proud. turning a corner here. Uh, it's more than math and science, I get it. <laughs> um, I think it was 1964 when the Federal Civil Rights Act was passed by the U.S. Congress and penned into law. And maybe originally I think there were five protected classes, race, color, religion, national origin. Uh, I'm not going to get the fifth one, but something like that, right? Uh, since then, uh, the Federal Civil Rights Act has had a number of amendments, right, uh, uh, to include protections of uh, sexual orientation. Uh, and uh, there's a statute here in New Hampshire uh, that aligns with the Federal Civil Rights Act that actually extends protected classes a, a bit further than the federal law, right? So if you go back to 1964, right, we're talking a long time ago, right, uh, that 
and it started before that, right? That this country has been dealing with uh, issues of equality and people not uh, viewing folks for who they are as individuals. Uh, this is not a new problem. It is front and center in our community because of what's happened. It's hateful. I am pleased that the state is involved. Uh, I don't understand it. I don't understand how people can have such hate. I, I, it's not in me, so I don't get it. I, I can't put myself there. I, I don't understand it, right? Um, people are entitled to their own beliefs. I'm a practicing Catholic. That doesn't mean I believe everybody should be a practicing Catholic. I, in fact, there are people that, that, that don't believe in religion. Uh, that's their choice. I have no hate against that, right? Um, so not being one that's filled with hate, it's very hard for me to understand. Um, I, I know that we adopted the resolution tonight, and we do on an annual basis, uh, and, and that certainly is a feel-good measure, but what does it do? Uh, I, I think it shows uh, a bit of support, but what more can be done? Uh, is a great question. Is it a community watch? I agree with Councilor Pepin. I think we should all be watchful, right? Um, if you see something, say something, I guess is the, is the tagline, right? I call 911 so often that when they answer the phone, they say, Dave, how can we help you today, right? They know my name, <laughs> right? Um, not sure that's a good thing, but uh, it's a bit embellished, but not too much, right? I do call often, right? Um, I guess it starts with messaging, and that's what we're doing here tonight. Uh, it starts with support. Uh, it does need to go more than further than that. Uh, but boy, as one city councilor, I'm, I'm not sure what that is, because I just don't understand it. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, councilor. At large, councilor. Councilor Gerding. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I said a lot already, so I'll try to be brief. Um, I just want to thank the mayor for bringing forward this resolution tonight. Uh, I believe it was 424 um, in support of our community's diversity um, and inclusion. Um, and thank you to the counselors for uh, unanimously supporting it and uh, sponsoring it. Very uh, proud to see us once again uh, reaffirming that. Um, and just wanted to, um, think again, thinking about solutions to this problem and what we can do, I, I just wanted to kind of re-emphasize something that I've been proud of in this community, which is like um, how much our police force trusts and believes in community policing. And I want to thank the chief for his, uh, you know, emphasis on community policing, because I feel like that that style of policing will actually go a long way to um, really encouraging the community to be involved in uh, efforts to make sure our community is safer and have a good relationship with our police officers and our police force. And I think, um, again, we're just, you know, at early stages of really trying to implement some of the chief's uh, new ideas and uh, things that I think will go a long way. So I'm excited to see um, how those community policing efforts will uh, continue to go forward and how they can um, actually help uh, this potential problem that we are seeing. So just another thought. Um, I think there's a lot there um, and more to digest, but um, I know I've already talked a lot, so thank you. Thank you, Councillor. At large, Councillor, Councillor Cameron. Thank you, Anna. Um, usually I'm pretty brief at the end of the night, but tonight I have quite a few comments to make. So, Mr. Brooks, in response to the HDC committee, my thoughts on this are this. They are in place because of the passion and commitment to the community. You apply and are appointed to the commission. We as a council put our faith in your decisions and the committee and that they put the city first. Perhaps maybe the charter does need to be looked at and maybe some guidelines changed, um, but that's something that probably could be achievable and that's just a suggestion. Willem Pond Bridge is music to my ears because as I talk about that almost every council meeting. Me and Fenway are out there quite a bit. So I will anxiously look forward to what the end result will be and hopefully that it would be the aluminum bridge because that will definitely last a lot longer and be there for quite a few years to come. 
National Night Out was a huge success. Again, thank you to the police department for organizing that. I always enjoy attending the event and seeing the community come together. The fire station, wow. State of the art to keep our firefighters safe and healthy to keep our city safe. What an honor it was for the mayor to relinquish the ribbon cutting to former Captain Marty Pepin. That was something to see, and it actually brought a little tear to my eye watching that. Um, and then we had the pleasure of pushing engine number five into the station. The residents should be very proud of this facility. I know we are, and work very hard on it. And on my closing, hate exists, not just here, but everywhere. As a community, we stand together with William and Lauren, and that's been shown and proven. They were attacked, and we all felt threatened as a city. I certainly hope that after their holiday that they took early, they come back to some resolution to the situation, but also stronger than ever to continue keeping their shop open where we welcome them with open arms. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. At large, Councillor. Councillor Messier. Thank you. I just want to uh, agree with everything that was said c concerning the, the incident that happened. I mean, I was brought up, you treat people the way you want to be treated. So, that being said, that. And another thing, I mean, like the song says. Ah, yeah, I'll forget that one. Uh, but I'll go to National Night Out. I went to that one. That was a great showing. All of the volunteers, the vendors, if I just say the police department, I will say, well, what about us? So that was a good job. And then election sign-ups, I believe, around our next council meeting. Mm -hmm. So people may want to recruit or keep that in mind for some new people or the same. And then the CIP, um, I'm hoping that we look at painting of the Forest Glade Cemetery fence. As I go by that two or three times a day, it needs some tender loving care. And then the recreational building behind the fire station. Got that nice fire station. Got that old dilapidated building. So I'm hoping in the capital improvement plan we can address those two. And I'll have others, and I'll send the list to Bob. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Austin moves that the City Council stand in adjournment, seconded by Councillor Gibson. The question over the Council is on adjournment. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nope. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and the City Council stands adjourned. <laughs>